Today we're going to look at how to sharpen an image in Photoshop when you've got camera shake using the camera shake reduction tool. So today we're going to look at correcting camera shake using a brilliant tool in Photoshop called camera shake reduction. Firstly let's talk about what camera shake actually is. The camera shake is when the camera has moved during the exposure. It's normally caused by slow shutter speeds whilst hand holding your camera. Another thing to note before we start is that Photoshop will correct slight camera shake but if it's really really uh, bad then you might as well just delete the picture, it can't perform miracles. So let's look at a picture I took recently for a fashion magazine. Here it is here, and I really like the picture, but when you zoom into it, what you can see, if I go to the focus point, there is camera shake. And you can see that there's camera shake because I've got two kind of eyelashes mirroring each other there, um, which I really, really don't want. So this shot, is directly out of camera straight into Lightroom and so this is how it, how it was shot. I'm going to right click on the picture, I'm going to go to edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now this is a really good example of how you need to use Lightroom and Photoshop because Lightroom is um, really good but when it comes to these real technical fine details you really need to go into Photoshop and correct it in there. So here we have my picture now in Photoshop. I'm gonna zoom in a bit here using the navigator. If you haven't got the navigator up, you go to window, go down, click on navigator, and it brings up the little navigator uh, box here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and there you can see that there's the camera shake that I want to get rid of. Go to filter, sharpen, shake reduction and it brings up this box here. Now, you might not have this square up, and it's because you need to click this advanced first. So click down on the advanced drop down um, arrow there, and you'll get these little boxes up. Now, this box is going to tell Photoshop where you want to take the shake reduction from. And it's a really good idea to put that box over the focus point. So with camera shake, just remember that you focus correctly, it's just the camera moved during the exposure. So the focus point was this eye. So I'm gonna put this box over this eye. And you can even draw, if you want to, a second box over another focus point like these lips, which I know should be sharp. So now what I've got is two boxes over the image telling Photoshop to look at these areas and estimate how much sharpness it needs. If you go over to the top right here, you've got this called the blur trace bounds. And if you slide it upwards, it will sharpen more. If you slide it downwards, it will sharpen less. Now, Photoshop does a really, really good job at estimating how much sharpness you actually need. Um, and generally, I hardly ever touch that. I'm gonna zoom in um, a little bit on my image here. So if I click here, I'm gonna go to 100%. And then if I hold down the space bar, I can move it around to the focus point that I want here. Let's click off preview. So we can see the image, the original image and then I'll click preview back again so we can see the sharpening that it's, that's gone on. Um, so it's already doing a pretty good job, but you can also tell Photoshop what direction the camera shake was in, and, that, and then this is, what, this is what makes this tool really special. It's this box under here called the Blur Direction Tool. Click on that, zoom right into the picture, so let's go to 600%. Again, hold down the space bar and move your picture around to the focus point, which is here. These are the eyelashes. 
and you can see there that the direction of the camera shake went at a slight diagonal angle down from, from that point to that point. So you click and hold, drag it from the start of the camera shake to the end of the camera shake, about there, and make sure you're going in the same direction. Release, and now what you've actually done is you've told Photoshop what direction the camera shake was in. If I click preview at the top here, it's gonna give me a preview, now look at that. It's literally brought that eyelash back in. It's pulled the two eyelashes, that's the camera shake part, it's pulled it back and made it into one eyelash again. This is a, that's a really, really good tool that Photoshop has. I'm gonna zoom back out now. Uh, let's go to 66% here. And now what I've got is a much sharper image. I'll click preview again and then preview again, and you can see it sharpening everything up. Now let me take you again through the rest of um, the boxes here. So this here is your blur trace length. So my camera shake was 7.8 pixels of movement. And here is the direction in which it blurred. Now you, you can use this box to change that and edit that if you want to. Down here, you've got something called smoothing, and that is pretty equivalent to noise reduction. Sometimes when you sharpen an image, depending on how blurred it is, you get noise, and this will help you uh, to reduce that noise. The next thing I want to show you is this thing here called the artifact suppression. Now, you won't really need to use that uh, unless you've got some serious camera shake. What the artifact suppression does is sometimes you can get like a ghost image, like a ghost line where your original pixels were. And then what this will do is suppress that ghost line. But like I said, you might not need that unless you've got some serious camera shake. Um, and generally it's good just to leave it um, as it is. Down the bottom here, under your advanced uh, box here, what you've got is the three areas that you've told Photoshop to look in um, to take an estimate of the sharpness that it needs. Now you can hide them, get rid of them, because sometimes actually less is more. Sometimes, um, and a lot of the time actually, if you just left it directly to Photoshop, didn't change any of these settings, you'd get a pretty good result. Um, but other times you need to tell Photoshop a bit more what to do. So you can hide these and it will give you another preview to see if it's better with them or not. So this box here is the mouth. This box here is the eye. This box here is the direction of shake. So if I just click off the mouse, uh, the, the mouth, sorry, then we can have a look to see if it makes a difference or not. So let's click it back on again. And it does, it makes, a, it makes a lot of difference. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. In the bottom here, you've got just a zoomed in version of your picture. It's best to try and put the focus point in that box so you can see the difference there, see it, see it happening. So when you're happy, click OK at the top. And here we have it now back into Photoshop. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can just see the head. And in my history palette, I'm gonna go back to the original state and then with shake reduction added. Now look at the difference in that, it's absolutely superb. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more so you can see it a little bit better, look. That's the original state and that is with shake reduction. It's just, it makes it look absolutely pin sharp like you didn't have camera shake in the first place. And now all you do is save the picture and it will put it back into Lightroom for you. So you can just go file, save. If you wanna change the name of it, like um, sharpened version, you can go save as and save it as the sharpened version. But I know that I don't need the original anymore. So I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna click save like that. And then it will show up in Lightroom as image, whatever the number is and edit. So let's go back into Lightroom. And there you can see, what's the name change here?
that one is the edit and that one is the original. So now I can work on it again in Lightroom and just carry on as normal, but this time with a nice sharp image. Okay, I hope that's helped you out and I hope that's gonna improve some of them camera shake pictures that you've got that you want to really use. If you like our tutorials, don't forget to subscribe and like and follow us on social media. And remember, learn more at the School of Photography.